Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportbikeTracker.com, and today we're going to do a review on the HJC ARFA 70 ST helmet. The ARFA 70 ST helmet retails from $359 up to $576. Depends upon whether you want a solid color helmet, that's going to be towards the low end, or one of the top level graphics like some of the partnerships they have out there. We've got a Wolverine graphic, some really cool stuff. There's a little bit in between too, like the graphic we're showing you here right now. This helmet is ECE 2205 and DOT certified. In a size large, it weighed 3.4 pounds on our digital shipping scale. Who is this right for? This helmet is designed for street riders that are looking for a full face helmet that also offers the convenience of a tinted drop down inner shield. What's included with it? It comes with everything you see right here, plus their fog free lens insert. Think of that as like a pin lock, I just think it's a different name, it's a proprietary piece they're having made now. A chin curt extension, we'll focus on this more in the second part of the video when we actually have the helmet torn apart and give you a close look from the inside out. And then we have a couple of replacement snaps for the emergency release cheek pad system. Let's jump right into sizing and shape of the helmet. I would rate the shape of the helmet to be intermediate oval. I think most that are coming into the US now have landed on that intermediate oval shape. It works really well for most riders here in the US. I measure 58 centimeters on the money, intermediate oval. In most helmets, I'm going to be a medium. In the ARFA 70 ST, I've tried on both a medium and a large, and I've worn them at my desk for an extended period of time to determine which one is right. The large gets me that fit that I think a street rider is looking for. It's not that super racy tight fit, but it does fit well. It's a proper fit. The medium, is the fit I prefer most, but I'm also doing the majority of my riding on a racetrack, right? So I'm out there for 20 minutes at a time. I like a really tight fit. When I compare this to their, their ARFA 11 Pro, which I have two of now, I've got the Spider-Man and I've got the, the Captain America helmet, the medium in this fits tighter than the medium in the ARFA 11 Pro did. And I would say the large in this runs just a little bit bigger than the ARFA 11 Pro. So if you take a measurement and you find yourself on the upper end of the medium scale like I am, and you know you don't want your helmet with a vice-like fit, you may want to consider going up a size. And I would use that recommendation and spread that throughout the entire size chart. Okay, features, benefits, let's break this down a little bit. This is eyeglass friendly. We're going to show you that too. We've got a little B-roll that Kale will blend in. So if you want to wear sunglasses, I don't know why you'd want to wear sunglasses with this because you do have the drop down inner, or you have glasses that you need for your vision, they are compatible with this. They did sit on the nose, which is really important for glasses wear. Centrally located shield lock. That is a very positive action. And uh, when a, you have a locking shield on a helmet, I have to say that what my experience has shown to me, putting it in the center is the absolute most effective place to do it. It's just really hard to have it over on the side, so I like to see that HJC is doing that. Ventilation with this helmet. Anytime you have a helmet with a drop-down inner shield, you're challenging yourself a bit from the ventilation perspective because you have to move everything further back. When you have the shield in the up position like so, Traditional vents that would be found here in the brow usually, right, those would just be blocked, so you won't find any there. They have to move all the holes further back in the helmet. So what HJC has done here with the 70 is there are three holes that are in the EPS under this large intake vent. You can see this is a large vent. This is going to bring a lot of air into the helmet up here on the crown. For exhaust ventilation, you have tunable vents here that can be turned on or off. These are going to be Venturi effect events. When the air is driven over through here and you have this open, it's going to pass over the hole and then it's going to draw up and remove the heat and the moisture from inside the helmet and exhaust it out the back. There are also two exhaust vents built into the back of the shell here with corresponding holes in the EPS. You come to the front of the helmet. We have ventilation right here 
in the upper portion of the chin bar. That is going to flow air through this breath deflector here and drive it up onto the shield. It's great for demisting, especially if you've chosen not to run the fog-free insert. The fog-free inserts are super effective. Regardless of condition, these will typically keep the shield fog-free. The only exceptions to that really is going to be when you get into extreme cold temperatures where it just overcomes what the shield has to offer. Not many folks are going to ride a motorcycle in temps like that. We also have another small active vent right down here at the very bottom of the chin bar. It's got this little spoiler here to help capture the air and drive it in. There is the chin curtain. There's a little switch right here on or off and there are two small intake vents that correspond with this. They're going to drive air literally right into that chin area. So HJC has tried to balance out the fact that with the drop down inner shield you're compromising traditional ventilation a little bit by adding a little bit here in the chin bar. So my expectations are, and I've not written in this just to be fair, that this is going to ventilate pretty well considering it's a helmet that offers a drop down inner shield. We have a double D-ring retention system, emergency release cheek pads. We have some reflective pieces here for nighttime visibility. This chin curtain is fixed. They have included in the package, and you can see the Velcro right here, a chin curtain extender. Cooler conditions, or if you need to reduce road noise, you'd slide that up into position here. Make sure you have it secured. And you now have a more traditionally full-sized chin curtain. Okay, kind of flip that up and give you a look. There's really not a Velcro patch that it's going to align with, but all this material seems to be interacting with the Velcro to hold it in place relatively well. Okay, now we'll tear this thing apart and give you a closer look from the inside out. The Arfa 70 ST comes in three different shell sizes. Extra small and small, share one. Medium and large, share one. Extra large and 2X will share the third shell size. This is a fiber-based shell, not a plastic shell, so it's more high-end, right? You're going to have a mixture of carbon fibers, some organic fibers, fiberglass, all into this lightweight shell. And at 3.4 pounds, in a size large on our shipping scale, I would say this is a lightweight helmet. To remove the shield, first thing you want to do is disengage the lock, lift it all the way into the upward most position. Pull back here on the trigger. It's a mirror image on each side, it's going to release the shield. To reinstall it, simply line up the tabs on the shield with the corresponding slots here and push in. HJC does a really good job with their shield mechanisms. Very simple, easy to use, and not over-engineered. The control for the drop-down inner is very smooth and you can also see that it comes down plenty far enough. It doesn't stop short. I like the distance when you have this on. You're not looking through half of it. It is plenty long enough. To remove the cheek pads, if it's an emergency situation, you'd simply get under this loop here and just pull, okay? If you're just servicing the helmet, replacing or cleaning the liner, you're going to want to wedge your fingers in between the back of the cheek pad and the EPS of the helmet. There's three snaps, one up front, one up top, and one towards the rear. Once you've released each one of those, I want you to grab right here at the front of the cheek pad, give a little tug, and kind of pull backwards and rotate it out. Give you a look at the quality. HJC is one of those brands that over the years they have evolved a tremendous amount, come a long way. They are making some really nice helmets at this point. If you have removed this using the emergency release system, what's going to happen is this little snap here is actually going to have pulled itself out. Okay, It'll stay inside the helmet, so you'll have to pop this out of the helmet and then slide it back into the channel. That's why they have included with this helmet some additional snaps just in case you've serviced it, tested it, and lost one of these. They've given you a couple extra snaps so you can get your helmet put back together. The other cheek pad is a simple mirror image. We've got our three snaps. Out it comes. Top pad, very basic. We have two snaps at the back. Come to the front. I like to try and grab on to the plastic that the liner itself is sewn to, so that way you're not pulling on the liner. 
Just give that a little wiggle and a tug back. You can see your top pad pulls right out. Once again, good quality. Inside the helmet, there are speaker pockets. So this is communication system ready. There's a lot of different systems on the market. The majority of them are universal and will integrate directly with this. If you have chosen to install one, you need to remove this little Velcro panel. And there is your speaker pocket. Let me try and get this rotated. Can you see that right there, Caleb? There is a patch of Velcro that's already in there. That's going to work well with some communication systems that already have that on the back of the speaker. If that's not going to work for you, you'll just simply need to remove that Velcro patch and work with it, whatever they've included, right? But this integrates directly with those universal systems. Let's take a look at that EPS now. And you can see right up front here, we have three holes that are all lined up with that intake vent. We have two holes here in the midsection of that EPS. Those are going to be aligned with the Venturi Effect exhaust vents that are switchable. And all the way at the back, this one might be a tough angle for them, but right here, there are two more exhaust vents that are built in that line up with the Venturi style exhaust vents all the way at the back of the helmet. Okay, closing thoughts. I think this is a good helmet. If you're looking for a street helmet, this is not something I'd ride on the racetrack. In my mind, anything with a drop down inner screen that really, you know, that separates street from street track for sure okay if you had to do some track days and one you started off riding just down the street and want to give the track a shot could you do it in this yeah absolutely you surely could if you're going to be a focused track rider do a lot of track days this probably isn't the product for you so this is more of a street bound product it's lightweight the quality is really good hjc does a phenomenal job over the years they've improved so much you know and you get these current products in your hands you wear it, you try it on, you ride in it, and you really come to understand they deliver a ton of value with a real quality product. If you're looking for a higher end street full face helmet with a drop down inner screen, this one definitely deserves a good look and should be on your short list. We already talked about the value adds, fog free insert, and it also comes with a really nice a, a premium helmet bag. You know, it's a little value add too, and it just helps you store your helmet and keep it safe. I dig it. If this is what you're looking for, should be on the short list.